From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of hot chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Hey, welcome to the Rick Altizer Show. My guest today is uh, singer and author Becky Nordquist. Becky, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're here in my here in my studio, and just it's it's great being able to do this today. We're going to talk about uh, a topic that might be for some people. This is going to be a real blessing to them. It's it's a uh, Becky has just written a new devotional called "Before We Said Hello: Finding Hope After Pregnancy Loss and Infant Loss," and one in every four women have experienced some kind of infant loss or pregnancy loss. So Becky, before we start, how did you get involved with this project? This is a project through, many of you know my friend Steve Seiler. He's been on the, sh- been on the show, oh, I don't know, about five times or so. And uh, and we're going to be also talking about where you can find this info at musicforthesoul.org. But Becky, how did you get involved with this particular project with Steve? You know, really, it was a God-orchestrated moment that we met through a mutual friend, and he asked me if I'd ever recorded anything, and I had just come off of working with Nashville Christian Songwriters with um, John Chisholm, and uh, David Baroni was my coach that weekend. So we had just done a demo, and so I gave him a copy of that and explained that the song that I'd written was out of about two years of grief. Uh, We had a stillborn son. We had already experienced, we had five pregnancy losses. My mom died. My dad died, or my brother died. My dad had died 20 years before. Um, And then I lost a friend, Lisa, who had had pregnancy losses and stuff in my basement. She died. And I found her. Oh, my goodness. And I couldn't revive her. I mean, it was literally like a loss once a month. Mm. But so the song was really birthed out of a season of sorrow and loss. Mm -hmm. And he said, you have a lot of pregnancy losses. And he had just written before we said hello. Mm. He said, you need to record the song for me. So Mm -hmm. I, of course, immediately prayed first and then said, absolutely. So, and it just grew from there, you know, where we ended up co-writing another song and with Tony Wood and, Mm -hmm. you know, and then the publicist said, where's the book? And we're like, yeah, it is a needed thing, and it's kind of that silent sorrow. Mm. People, it happens. It's one in four people. So, I mean, you know, they just don't talk about it. The conversations come far, but not far enough. Well, sure. You know, we experienced a pregnancy loss. Mm. Our first pregnancy was a was a miscarriage, and mm. my sister in law uh, lost an infant loss. She mm. uh, went to full term, and mm. Samuel uh, was mm. was born stillborn. Um, so, uh, I think. You know, he was alive for a few moments. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, very difficult still to this day. That's that's uh, something that you you don't ever get over something like that. And so so, and um, so, you know, so many times in our uh, in our Christian radio, it's, uh, you know, positive. Mm -hmm. Everything's up and happy and positive. But we we look at the the Psalms, we look at Scripture and, and, you know, there is lamentations. Mm -hmm. There are Mm -hmm. times where. Uh, everything isn't always happy, and mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's it's not uh, happy, positive, yay, 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 when we're losing a child. So let's talk a little bit about Nicholas, your your child that was was born. Was he born stillborn? He was stillborn. Yes. Did he come to full? Was it full term? No, no, not full term. We were about six months in. Mm-hmm. He had passed away several weeks before we actually gave birth. We didn't know that he had passed. So we had just seen him on ultrasound waving and moving around, and the doctor and I joked about how movement, how much movement there was with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, they figure probably maybe even days after we saw him waving literally at the camera. And, uh, yeah, so it's, you know, all loss is difficult. And you mentioned, you know, lament. And it's a sacred ground, lament. You know, we go through grief and we go through these these um, journeys in life when we just relinquish to God's process in it, who he becomes is so incredible. And so through Nicholas and our other losses, I mean, who God's become is priceless in that. So, but yeah, our little Nicholas is a special little guy, special little guy. He ended up, we had an autopsy done and he had four different... Um, 
disabilities. And uh, mm. so it, it would have been a very difficult life for him here. Mm-hmm. Um, but he looked just like his little brother that we have, Sam. Our, our rainbow boy was Samuel. So, okay. yeah, and I look at him and I'm going, oh, my goodness. When Sam was born, it was it was kind of incredible to notice the, mm. the similarity in their facial features. So, so, so you, you know, this song before we said hello was this song obviously about the, the loss of a, a child. Um, and then you wrote a devotional. Can we talk a little about this 30-day devotional then? So, because mm-hmm. so, someone might be listening right now who, you know, has experienced this, or maybe they know someone who's who's lost an infant or has just gone through a miscarriage. Uh, could you talk a little bit about this devotional that you have? Sure. Um, one of the things that we discussed was that we didn't want each day to be very long, because when you're in the middle of grief, it's sometimes hard to read. I know I had a lot of difficulty picking up the Word of God. Because you go through everything that you go through in grief, which is anger and asking why. And um, what I really loved about working with Steve on this is that he and I are very kindred in the thought that God wants us to be honest in our grief. And so a lot of the days, there's it's not a quick fix. It's not a, okay, let's be happy now kind of devotional. It is, let's get real with our grief and the process in grieving. Let's acknowledge the fact that we don't understand why this happened and where was God. And it's okay. We can ask big questions because he's a very big God and he wants us to enter into this honestly. I mean, our relationship with him going forth and just being truthful about our heart. He already knows anyway. Mm. So that's so important um, as we wrote this to just really allow uh, the reader to sit and just be honest with where they're at. And then this, the journaling space. I think they are going to need an extra notebook to write. I don't know if they're anything like me. They're going to need an extra notebook to write out how they feel because there are some some leading questions that they can go up. Or or sometimes it's just writing out a prayer to the Lord and saying, God, I don't understand. And you feel absent to me, you hmm. know, but and often he does feel silent to us. But God's not a feeling always. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so much truth. So there's lots of scripture in there, too, that we can stand on and rely on. And the other beautiful thing, and probably one of my favorite, I have two favorite things about this. One of them is that it's infused with stories of other people who have experienced loss like this. And they have varying degrees and the situations are all very different. And that's this journey. We all have a different journey and it all looks different. Um, so, But there's an element of hope because each person that shared their story in the book also offers the hope that they received from God. And it feels like you're sitting in a room with a group of friends that are walking the same journey as you. Mm. And, um, and of course, the last favorite thing that I have about this book, and this was such a gift to me, is that on the cover is this tiny little circle. And in that circle are a copy of Nicholas's footprints. Oh, beautiful. And so though his feet have never touched earth, mm-hmm. they will go everywhere. Yeah, they're in this this uh, this devotional. It's amazing. You know, you can find more information about this devotional uh, before we said hello. Um, finding hope after pregnancy loss and infant loss by going to musicforthesoul.org. And um, also included with the book are uh, QR codes that let you download two songs. And I'm going to go ahead and play one of those songs right now. Um, I'm going to play for you the song Before We Said Hello, and this is Becky singing on this song, and my friend Steve was uh, wrote the song. Uh, Steve's my buddy. But uh, I want you guys to, to kind of listen to this and, and pay attention as we continue this discussion uh, here on the Rick Altizer Show. This is Becky Nordquist, Before We Said Hello. I 
That was before we said hello, by Becky Nordquist, and that is on the. Uh, uh, you get that as a as a download when you you get the uh, the the devotional she wrote before we said hello, and you can get information on that as well as I said before by going to musicforthesoul.org. So talk to me about recording that song. What a powerful song! Um, mm-hmm. You know, we're talking about you know not a. This isn't happy happy. This is very heartfelt, very uh, – I, I could just hear as you were singing, I could hear the cry. You know, talk to me about the, the process of recording mm. that emotionally, what was going on as you were singing that. Mm. Well, it certainly is very different from leading worship every Sunday because <laughs> that's primarily what I've been doing for a while here. So, um, you know, music has always played such a healing place in my life. I mean, know that – Definitely, God has used it in keeping me alive, literally. Um, Being in the studio, I specifically brought pictures of our process of losing Nicholas. And you can see that. I think um, Steve actually has a couple photos on on his website, Music for the Soul, and on my website. I have a bunch of pictures, too. And, um, you know, just to remember and... You know, it heals a place in me to kind of go back into that time and emote about it, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because we did have the five losses of pregnancy. And that's the hard part because that baby's so real to you. 
but really wasn't real to anyone else other than mm-hmm. you telling them. Mm-hmm. So it just was really meaningful. And I'm so humbled and honored. I mean, because there are one in four. So, I mean, God could have chosen anyone to sing this song. And I, uh, it almost makes me want to cry now because <laughs> um, I'm just a chicken farmer <laughs> that has a goat and horses and... Um, I love Jesus and I don't know why he's put my feet on this path, but I'm grateful because, Mm -hmm. um, to be broken for the broken Mm -hmm. is an honor and Mm -hmm. the stories and, you know, the stories that have come already so early in the project have just, it's humbling for someone to come up and offer their heart to you Mm -hmm. and to be able to weep with them and help hold their child that is not living on earth for a, for a period of time and pray with them and just let them know that they're not alone. A lot of people, the isolation, depression, suicide, um, and, and being suicidal for women and men who have lost, it's serious. And, and so I don't, I don't take one story lightly or one moment with a a face-to-face person that has experienced loss. I just don't take that lightly, and I'm honored. Someone who is experiencing this loss, uh, you know, what would you say to them? And, uh, you know, how would you encourage them right now? Hmm. Well, most of all, I want them to know they're not alone. They're not alone because there's so many of us, for one, but they're not alone because they have a God who is always ever-present, and he catches their tears And their prayers fall into the heart of a loving father, even when they feel like they're hitting the ceiling. And your baby's life mattered. It doesn't matter if it was four weeks gestation and nobody knew but you, Mm -hmm. or if it was full term or hours after birth Mm -hmm. or even months. Your baby's life mattered. And your grief is your grief. Hmm. Um, You know, part of this process, obviously, you know, the husbands aren't having the child and, you know, inside them, you're feeling this child move, you're connected to the child in a way, uh, you know, as a man, you know, I can never really fully understand the connection a mom has with a child. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I physically can't understand, you know, ever grasp what that would be like to have this, this life inside of you. And, um, can we talk a little bit about some of your husband's process through this and how he, mm-hmm. you know, because f- men go, you know, it, it's grieving for men as well. Mm-hmm. Although it's different uh, physically, there's still an emotional grief. How did your husband uh, navigate this? How did he kind of work through the, these issues? Mm. You know, I always say that Dave is my string holder because I'm the creative in the house. Although Dave has a, does have a very creative side. Um, he's... Uh, He's the more linear thinker and engineer. He is an engineer. So, um, but he, you know, as we've talked, you know, of course, initially he was the rock, you know, just holding me. But as we've processed through his grieving process, um, he talks a lot about just feeling responsible to take care of me. You know, um, as a guy, he feels you know, like he needs to fix the problem Mm -hmm. and he needs to (laughs) kind of control parameters and protect. And, um, you know, that's a very strong, uh, characteristic in my husband too. He's just very much the, I'm, I'm going to take care of things and, and protect my wife. And so he very much was such an incredible support, but in his own heart, you know, he didn't, he didn't know if he was doing the right thing. And he didn't know really how to deal with that level of loss because he was excited. But again, like you said, you know, he's not carrying the child physically. Um, So, I mean, he'd felt Nicholas move certainly, you know, through my stomach. But I mean, other than that, you know, it wasn't quite as intimate as a mother to child. He did a lot of his grieving when he was out mowing the lawn or out on a walk, Mm -hmm. um, he's introvert anyway. So, Mm -hmm. um, he does a lot of his think thinking time when he's outside or, or working on a project like car or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's difficult because men are often the unsung heroes too. Um, 
and they don't talk about it a lot, even more so than women. So when we're talking about a topic where women aren't really talking about it much, the guys really aren't talking about it much. So yeah, important to create space and community for guys too. But yeah, his, his heart was broken, but it was in a different way. And, um, you know, he did things like paint the nursery and put the crib up and, Mm -hmm. you know, more tangible things like that. So having to take it all down was a big part of his grief. Mm -hmm. Do you have other kids? Do you have other children? We do. We do. Dave and I have two small kids. They're both rainbow babies. Um, Grace is six and Sam is four. And then we have, we're also a blended family. So we have a lot of older children. When I say a lot, I mean a lot. We have six older kids. So they range from 28 years old down to 23. So they're all adults. And in fact, you know, we have uh, one daughter that we have two grandkids and one on the way. And she's also experienced a pregnancy loss. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's it's a one big family oh when we're goodness. all together. But it is a riot. <laughs> it, you know, and then we had little kids. Dave and I had ours, you know, Grace and Sam and Nicholas. And, you know, we have the five uh, babies in heaven, too. But, you know, we said it's either going to keep us young or it's going to kill us. We're not sure yet. <laughs> it's still it's still totally out, you know, out for uh, up for grabs yet. <laughs> well, uh, you're listening to the Rick Altizer show. My guest uh, today is uh, Becky Nordquist, singer and author. And we're talking about uh, her devotional book that she's written called Before We Said Hello, um, Finding Hope After Pregnancy Loss and Infant Loss. And you can get more information about that that devotional by going to musicforthesoul.org. Also with the book uh, is a download for two songs. We played one of those songs today, but I was wondering if you could come back for next week and we'll go ahead and talk. Because you said something about the baby being, those children being in heaven. I'd like to discuss that a little bit more and Mm -hmm. look into that. And I just think this is such an important topic that I, I don't think we can really fully do do it justice in just a, a, a half hour uh, interview. So were you good to come back for next time? I would love to. All right. Well, thank you, Becky, so much for being here. You thank know, if you. people want to get more information on uh, on you and on things you're doing, how can people find out more info on you online? Well, certainly I have a website. Um, you can certainly ask Steve too, <laughs> but my website is www.beckynordquist. Dot com. Nordquist is N O R D Q U I S T. That's right. Nordquist.com. And also by going to musicforthesoul.org. Uh, it, Steve Seiler is my friend, a good friend who's been on the show about five times. And in that, it, they specialize in uh, music for healing. So mm-hmm. you'll see things about loss of a loved one or men struggling with pornography or. Uh, women's uh, self-image issues. And here, uh, the, this new project is, uh, uh, you know, finding hope after pregnancy loss and infant loss. So, uh, again, if you know somebody uh, who has struggled with this or has had this happen or, or you're just yourself, I, I encourage you to share this, uh, this podcast, this show with them. And you can get more information uh, on where to find uh, this by going to rickaltizer.com or just looking anywhere online uh, where you listen to podcasts by checking out The Rick Altizer Show. Becky, thanks for being with me this week, and we look forward to having you again uh, back next week. Thank you. If there's a show you've missed, you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and catch up. Or you can listen to my podcast in iTunes or wherever you hear your podcasts. Just search for The Rick Altizer Show. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. I want to thank you for listening. Hey, would you tell a friend about this show and share the love? Be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Like a flower that was crushed Before it could bloom Like a story just begun That ended much too soon The grief love interrupted That has no place to go We said goodbye before we said Oh
someday I'll see you But that doesn't fill the ache I'm feeling now Your life was so special So special Such a miracle Life goes on But I 